Hi booktube, Lynette here and in this video I'm going to talk to you about all the books that I managed to finish in the month of August. I had a fairly good reading month in August. I actually managed to finish seven books in total. At the start of the month I didn't think I was going to do that well. Um, I'd set myself a very small TBR. I didn't achieve everything that was on my TBR but I did uh, get most of them read. So the first book of the month that I finished is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. This is a science fiction novel set in space and it's following two separate factions of, uh, of humanity. What's actually happened is that um, humans have left Earth and they've taken up residence on planets in space. So we've colonised Mars, we've colonised Mercury and I think we've also colonised Venus. We've also colonised an asteroid belt. Uh, so there are three factions of humanity in this now and there are those that live on Mercury, those that live pretty much in space and those that live on the asteroid belt. There are two separate religions and there is the one religion obviously is fighting the other religion and we're following two characters from those stories. The first character that we're following is just referred to as the first sister and her role is she's on one of the uh, space bound ships and she is kind of like a minister uh, to the soldiers that are on the ship and but she also performs another function those uh, soldiers for the sisterhood they can access their bodies and do what they want with them at any time so I do give a trigger warning for rape you don't actually see it happen but it is talked about and it is in there as part of the story and as part of the main character's history as well at the start of this book uh, the first sister is given a new captain on board the ship and she is tasked by the head of her order to spy on this new captain because they believe that she may be a traitor to their uh, their race of humans. And she, at first she's reluctant to do this because it means that she would need to use paper and pen. She would need to communicate more fully with the captain of the ship and she's not happy to do this. It puts her in great danger. The second character that we're following is Leto Val Lucius. He is an elite warrior of Venus and normally these elite warriors work in pairs but his warrior Hero has disappeared and he has now been told that Hero is a traitor uh, to the colony on Venus and he has been tasked with finding him and potentially killing him. In the course of searching for him he finds out some truths and Eventually his path crosses with the first sister and lots of things come to light about their both their ways of life that they don't agree with and that they want to fight against. I think this book is actually going to be uh, first in a series. I only gave it three stars. I did enjoy it while I was reading it but towards the end it felt a bit messy and a bit hurried and I wasn't really sure whether it is the start of a series or not by the ending. It kind of reads like it is, but it doesn't. Um, if you like sci-fi, then you probably would enjoy this. There isn't a lot of science fiction-y in it, um, but the space setting and uh, obviously the, the futuristic uh, advancements that we've made in terms of our technology are quite interesting to read about. So I did give it the three stars for that. I would consider picking up the sequel if there is one to see what it's like but it wouldn't be something that I would rush to put on my TBR. So the next three books I'm going to talk about together because they are all part of a series and it was the three in death books that I wanted to read during the month of August. The first one being Holiday in Death, the second Midnight in Death and the third Conspiracy in Death. This series is a 50 book series, 51 is about to release in the next month or two and they follow New York police detective Eve Dallas as she is on the hunt of serial killers. These three books are no exception, she is again hunting down serial killers who are putting her and her family in danger and in one of the books she's also got her career is on the line as well. And 
these books are no exception to the previous ones i thoroughly enjoyed them all i gave them three and four stars and i'm looking forward to reading the next in the series jd robb the writing is now improving quite a bit and i'm getting to grips with her style of writing now so i can differentiate between the different voices as she's writing them so i'm getting used to that and i'm really enjoying the series uh i'm i look forward to reading every single one i know i've definitely got one on my september tbr which is probably going to be read quite early in the month as well so i will move on with those i'm sure i've talked about these in my previous wrap-ups and tbrs so there isn't really much more to say other than i thoroughly enjoy them and i recommend them if you like a romance crime thriller and the fifth book that I finished in the month of, of August is Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in her Rainwilds Chronicle series and it's the first book to the fourth series in her overarching Realm of the Elderlings. This book picks up uh, where the Live Ship Traders series left off and we're now following the serpents who travelled up the river we're now following their cocoon stage and them into hatching out into dragons. Unfortunately, because of the length of time that they spent in the oceans and also from their travel up the Rainwild River, they have emerged as dragons who are, for want of a better description, they are disabled. Uh, they have stumpy legs, they have wings that don't work, uh, or their wings aren't big enough to carry them. They are unable to communicate in the way that dragons should so there's all sorts of varying degrees of disability and but one thing they do have is they do have their collective memories that they have from the dragons who gave birth to them as serpents that's something that carries down through their genetic line and in this they have memories of a beautiful city called Kelsingra. They decide that they want to travel up the further up the Rainwild River to Kelsingra because they don't want to live in the squalid, dirty conditions that they're currently being kept in by the Rainwild traders. The Rainwild traders, likewise, are quite happy for the dragons to move on because they don't want the expense of having to feed them anymore and keep them in the squalor that they are living in. So they uh, ask for young people from the Rainwilds who are also not of they're also disabled uh, that's probably the best way to put it um, they're born with claws with scales and to my mind they very much resemble elderlings but they send a bunch of those off with dragons to find Kalsingra so the first half of the book is the obviously the lead up and you're meeting everybody who's going to be involved in this and the second half of the book is then about the journey that they start to make up the river and the dragon keepers and the dragons bonding there's also another there's also another two characters in here you're following elise finbock who is from bingtown trader families and she has been studying the elderlings and draggling dragons since she was very young and she wants to travel up the Rainwild River to see them only she arrives at the point that they are preparing to leave on their own voyage so she decides that she is going to go with them because she is about the only person who has any real knowledge of dragons and elderlings she's then on a ship called Tarman and it's uh, following Tarman up the river Tarman is not he's a barge rather than a live ship but he has been made of the same wizard wood as the live ship so if you've read the live ship traders then you know what that's about um so yes i thoroughly enjoyed it uh i read first read this about 11 or 12 years ago when the book first came out because at that point i was reading her books in in uh, publishing order and I was at the point that these were being published and um, I enjoyed it at the time but I never actually finished the series but I treated myself to the the whole lot in July because it was my birth month so I really felt that I had to get on with it um so I really enjoyed the starting the series I didn't move on to Dragonhaven the second book straight away um but I would definitely be looking to pick that one up at some point in September Book six of the month was The Duchess War by Courtney Milan, and this was for Romanceopoly. Uh, I've forgotten which square it's for now, but 
um i i'm falling a bit behind with romanceopoly now so at some point i'm gonna have to have a splurge and catch up uh, but i've hit a bit of a snag with one of the books that i picked initially for july uh, the Duchess War is about <clears throat> Minnie, uh, who is a bit of a wallflower, or she's pretending to be a bit of a wallflower, because she has a history that she doesn't want anyone to know about. It also follows the Duke of Claremont, Robert Blaisdell, and it starts out with them actually meeting. Minnie is hiding from the man she is hoping to become engaged to, and uh, the Duke of Claremont is also plotting something um, and is also hiding from the party that they are both at. And they have a bit of a, um, a, a to and fro. It's quite clear that uh, they are each other's equals intellectually and it sets itself up for quite a good to and fro between them because obviously they're quite taken with each other uh, but Minnie is a bit of, a, like I say, is a bit of a wallflower and she doesn't want to draw attention to herself by getting involved with someone as high profile as the Duke. At the same time, Minnie is accused of inciting riotous thoughts in the local factory workers, only she hasn't been doing that and she has to work with the Duke to move the suspicion away from her and to where it should actually be. I've thoroughly enjoyed this book. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I like historical romance anyway, so I like the setting. Instead of being set in London for a change, it was set in the north of the country, up in Leicester, uh, which made a nice change from a lot of the historical fiction that I've read before, historical romance fiction that I've read before. And I really enjoyed it. I would actually recommend it if you like romance, like historical romance. And I shall certainly be following up with the next book in the series because there are some characters that I want to know. Do they get their own happy ever after? And I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. And the final book that I finished in the month of August is the one that I picked up completely on a whim because I was feeling a bit slumpish and I didn't really want to pick anything up that I'd set for myself. And so I had a look through what I'd recently purchased and I came up with Hard to Handle by Kay Bromberg. Kay Bromberg is an absolute auto-buy author for me. I buy her books as soon as she releases them, regardless of whether I actually read them straight away or not, because I know that I'm going to enjoy them. This book was no exception, and I gave it four stars. And this book is about Hunter Maddox, who is a big-name ice hockey player, who is having some personal difficulties which are flowing through to how he's behaving on the ice. Enter Decker Kincaid, who is a sports representative and sports agent, and she is trying to win Hunter over to her father's firm, although without Hunter finding out that that's what she's doing. They also have a past. They are old flames, and they are each other's one that got away. So this is very much a second chance romance. Really, really enjoyed it. I loved the interplay between them. They had such a feisty, friction-filled relationship, but they see each other and they get each other and that comes off the page straight away. Uh, Decker knows exactly how to help Hunter um, without him realising that that's what she's trying to do. And he gets, she gets him to admit to himself um, that he really does have some issues that he has to sort out. Uh, obviously there is a bit of push and pull and they don't really want to admit how they feel about each other so that does take some work throughout the end of the book and it takes some home truths on both sides but eventually they get there and they get their happy ever after and I thoroughly enjoyed it it was really great it was just it was fun and it was serious and I could identify with it in parts and I just I thoroughly enjoyed it it was exactly what I needed at exactly the right time so I'm very glad that I picked it up again if you like uh, contemporary romance give Kay Bromberg a, a go like I say she's a complete auto buy author for me and I thoroughly recommend her to anyone who asks me I want to get started in romance who should I start with 
Hi, so editing Lynette here and I just thought I'd pop in because I did actually finish another book in August and that was Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This was the book that I was supposed to be reading for the Just One More Page book club and I did actually finish it right on the 31st of August uh, just after I filmed this video. So I just wanted to um, cut in and talk to you about that one as well. Uh, Bear Town is about a community um, in a town which is aptly called Bear Town. Uh, they are a very hockey obsessed community and the book starts out with them leading up to the junior team being involved in a competition and they are leading up to the semi-finals and it's all about how the important ice hockey is to the community itself because if the team is successful then it would mean investment in the town the town is actually dying out, it's failing uh, quite badly and um, the, the, the success of this team means that a lot of changes would happen for the town and a lot of positives would happen for the town. Unfortunately there is an incident that then happens which may or may not have an impact on that um, success and trigger warning that the actual um, act that happens is a rape. And the second half of the book is the fallout from what happens when the woman who is raped actually reports it and how that has an impact on the team uh, because it does directly affect the team as well. And it's how the community reacts to it. Uh, this is a book that I, I enjoyed the reading of it. I still haven't, I, I think I'm filming this about two weeks after I finished it and I still haven't decided whether I actually liked it or not. I, I just can't say whether I loved the book or not. I certainly gave it four stars, which means that right at the end of the book, I was feeling really like, wow, this was a great book. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I, again, I still can't. I think it's just the the content obviously is quite disturbing and the reaction of the entire town uh, to the rape is just is very disturbing as well because unfortunately it's also quite realistic because these are views that people will have in the real world and I found that I found it saddening and disturbing and I was angry for quite a lot of the second half of the book um, and then towards the end of the book I was actually really pleased because the way the the young woman who was involved the way she handled it I thought she was just amazing in the way she handled it I I think that there is no way I would have handled it um, in the same way uh, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling to put together my thoughts on it to be perfectly honest with you um, other than yes I, I do recommend it um, but like I say, there is the trigger warning there. So if that is something that you would uh, struggle with, then obviously this isn't the book for you. But I would definitely consider reading more work by Frederick Backman. In fact, I think I've been told that there is actually a sequel to this book. So certainly I think I will probably look at that and just see how um, the town moves forward. Um because I don't think it follows the same character specifically, but yes, I'm I'm quite uh, willing to look into the second book as well. Um, so that was actually the final book that I finished in the month of August. So back to the pre-recorded part of this video. So those are all the books I've been reading in the month of August. I hope you had a good reading month. If you have, let me down in, the, well, if you have or if you haven't, let me know what you have or haven't managed to read in August in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you all there. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.